So it's been an exciting couple of days as we've all had time to digest the news that Apple is officially going to be making a transition over the next two years away from Intel towards Apple Silicon. However, there is a question that I keep getting quite frequently across various different channels, and that is, what about the existing Macs? Should I buy an Intel Mac in 2020? Let's talk about it. Now, as a tech enthusiast, I am obviously really excited to see what is in the future for us here as it pertains to the switch to Apple Silicon. I'm an early adopter. I can't wait to get my hands on and test these new products. However, for quite a large number of people, uh, that's just not realistic. I've had quite a few people contact me with understandable frustration and stress about this situation because if you're coming up right now on the point where you're looking to purchase a new Mac, this whole situation, as cool as it might be, is definitely nerve wracking. Let's face it, if you're spending $1,000 plus on a new Mac, you want it to last. You wanna buy a Mac that is going to be with you for several years, more than the two years Apple says it needs to transition their entire lineup to Apple Silicon. So you wanna know that you're going to be maximizing your dollar, but you also don't wanna just wait around for eternity for the next big thing. I feel like we as tech reviewers on YouTube are very easily distracted by the fact that there's always something new around the corner. There's always another product that we're buying, we're in reviewing and then selling later. I buy pretty much all the new Macs that come out at this point. I, I usually sell them a couple of weeks or a month or two after I'm done testing, usually at pretty significant losses, but that's part of the job. That's what you guys come here for, so that's what I do. But most people don't actually operate like that, obviously. You're trying to find the one Mac that works for you that you can keep for ideally four, five, six years. Let's say hypothetically you have a 2014 Retina MacBook Pro and you were planning on waiting for the 16 inch to get Apple Silicon. You're going, okay, I mean, it might be a year, might, maybe even two years, but my MacBook Pro is usable. I'm gonna keep using it. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna maximize my dollar. But uh-oh, whoopsie, you accidentally spilled liquid on it and now it's broken. You need a new Mac right now. And that's a situation that is really inconvenient and has happened to a lot of people. I've been contacted by a bunch of people that are going, okay, I, wanna, I wanted to wait for Apple Silicon, but my computer is broken. I need to buy a new one. What should I do? So I'm just gonna say it right now in July, 2020, do not necessarily be afraid to buy an Intel Mac. We don't know how long it's gonna take for this transition. We don't know if the transition is gonna be seamless. And we do know that there are going to be more Intel-based Macs in the future. So it would be a little bit foolish to say, well, I'm just not gonna buy any Mac ever again that has an Intel processor in it. Because for one, you're gonna be waiting a long time. And two, you might actually get disappointed when it does happen. We don't know what it's gonna look like. So it's, it's definitely not a situation where it's black and white, where you wanna say, all right, no one's allowed to buy Intel anymore. Everyone has to wait for Mac OS with Apple Silicon. Mac OS with Apple, Macs with Apple Silicon. So with that being said, what are the different Macs that are going to get updated? Well, Apple currently sells eight distinct models of Mac computers. There's the 13 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, 21.5 and 27 inch iMac, iMac Pro, and Mac Pro. Now, obviously we don't know a whole lot about the timeline for when these are going to be transitioned to Apple Silicon, but I think it's a pretty safe bet that the iMac Pro and the Mac Pro are going to get updates last. This makes sense to me for two reasons. Number one, the Mac Pro was just updated in December 2019. Huge update, completely new design. People are spending upwards of $50,000 on it. So I think it would be a little bit of a, a little bit of an F you to people that spent a ton of money on that if Apple were to just completely replace it in like a year. And then there's the second reason that quite frankly, it's gonna take a little while for Apple to get the performance of their chips up to and exceeding that of a 28 core Mac Pro. Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure Apple's been working for ages on this. I'm sure they have some amazing things in the pipeline, but quite frankly, it's gonna take a bit of time 
to outperform the $50,000 Mac Pro. The same goes for the iMac Pro. Um, I'm actually not even certain that there will be an iMac Pro in the future. It might just get phased out through this transition, but at the very least, I think it would take a little while. You know, 18 core iMac Pro is probably not going to be outperformed within a year by Apple Silicon. I could be wrong, this clip could age really badly, but I think the Pro stuff is gonna take a little longer. As far as what's gonna get updated first, we do have some information from analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, who says the 13-inch MacBook Pro and a new 23 or 24 inch iMac are going to be here by the end of the year. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing for potential iMac customers. Right now, the iMac hasn't been updated since March of 2019. So that is a hard pass. Do not buy a new iMac right now. And what's interesting is that Ming-Chi Kuo seems to think that the Intel iMac, the normal 21.5 inch and 27 inch iMacs are gonna get updated sometime sort of late this summer. So most likely this means they're gonna get Intel processors like 10th gen ones and probably RDNA graphics, a logical spec bump type upgrade. But it's not clear whether that's going to be the redesigned iMac that we've all been kind of hoping for. I'm inclined to think that it won't because I think it would be really stupid for Apple to completely redesign a product during this transition and put Intel in it that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. What I think is gonna happen is we'll get a spec bump on the 21 and 27 inch IMAX later this summer, and then towards the end of the year, probably December if we're being honest, we'll get the actual first Apple Silicon iMac. It'll be a new product, so it'll be separate, not replacing the 21.5 inch, but it'll be a separate product category, which also means it'll probably be more expensive, and that'll sort of be the flagship iMac, and then obviously later, probably in 2021, that'll get a larger counterpart, maybe even a Pro, maybe an iMac Pro with Apple Silicon, please? So that seems like the most likely path for the iMac. If you are shopping for an iMac right now, you absolutely need to buy one at this very moment. Do not buy a brand new 2019 model. Buy one refurbished, buy one used on eBay. The prices are coming down pretty significantly there. In fact, let's broaden that and do a general rule of thumb. If you're looking for a Mac and the Mac that you're looking at has not been updated in more than eight months, I would wait, wait for an update. If your current Mac can survive, just wait for the next one. On the other hand, if you absolutely have to buy a new Mac right now, let's say your old one is so old that it's not really usable anymore for what you need it to do, or it's broken. Your, your current Mac has just died, literally, before you watch this video and you're watching on your phone right now because it's on fire, you absolutely have to buy a Mac right now. I would say your best bet is to buy something used that will get you through about two years at the most, and then you'll be able to make an evaluation. Okay, I wanna go for Apple Silicon. Now, obviously, if you are not interested in Apple Silicon, you could not care less about this update, then good news, because it doesn't matter. None of this applies to you. You can buy, a new or refurbished existing Intel Mac and your conscience will be clean. You could potentially be laughing at us in a couple of months as we all suffer through the Apple Silicon transition if it doesn't go well. So I would say the current Macs are really solid, especially the MacBooks. The 16 inch is fantastic. The 13 inch, it's a bit boring, but it's a solid computer. So the TLDR advice would be if you need a new Mac, but you want Apple Silicon and you aren't sure what to do while you wait, buy a used one that won't depreciate very much and then you can sell it when you're ready to upgrade. Or if you don't care, then you don't care and just buy an existing Intel Mac, except for an iMac. Don't buy a 2019 iMac. I don't care what your position is, do not buy a 2019 iMac right now. It's way too old to be buying one new. Now, if you're on the fence about whether you should wait for Apple Silicon and you're not sure what performance you should be expecting, obviously we don't know a whole lot right now, but we can draw some clues from existing Macs and what Apple has told us about this transition. Now, the first and most sort of blanket statement thing that you could possibly say is that Apple does not like to release a new product that is less powerful than the old one. I'm sure someone's gonna embarrass me with another example right about now, but the only time I can think of a Mac that was demonstrably slower than its predecessor was the 2014 Mac Mini, which only had dual core processors, whereas the 2012 had quad cores. 
Apart from that, it would be extremely unlikely for Apple to release a new product that is less powerful than its predecessor. Now, as is usually the case with a new generation, I highly doubt that the 23 inch iMac will be less expensive or positioned as a less powerful alternative to the existing 21.5 inch iMac. Now, currently the most powerful configuration of the 4K iMac comes with a Core i7 8700, as well as Vega 20 graphics. So with that in mind, I think it is pretty much guaranteed that a 23 or 24 inch iMac is going to be able to beat a Core i7 8700 and Vega 20 graphics. And I think that that's something Apple could pull off. Now, for example, last year benchmarks revealed that the A13 Bionic chip has comparable single core performance to a Core i9 9900K. Now, obviously that's not sustained. The A13 is in a phone, it's not actively cooled, it's not gonna be able to sustain performance for long periods of time. But the very fact that it was able to be compared from a phone to a 9900K tells us that Apple has the ability to make some extremely powerful chips. Now, if you were to scale that up with greater power draw, active cooling, and more cores, I think it's very reasonable to see a, an Apple Silicon chip that is able to compete with a six core Intel processor. Who knows, they might even be able to get up there in 10900K territory by 2021. And in fact, if we're being very optimistic and very cavalier about our estimates, Apple showed off this chart at WWDC, and that means Apple's implying that they're at least trying to get 9900K levels of performance with a 45 watt laptop processor. That would be truly mind boggling. So to wrap this video up, um, I wish that I could be really helpful. I wish that I could tell you exactly what's going to happen and what you should be able to buy and what you should wait to buy. But quite frankly, this is uncharted territory. Even in the past when we've had rumors, we've had you know precedent to go by here, but we, we really don't know what's going to happen. So as I said earlier, really the only thing that you can do is buy used wherever possible if you want to wait. If getting the absolute most current bleeding edge tech for your dollar is your utmost concern here, then wait as long as you can to update your Mac. Wait until whatever you're looking at, be it a 16 inch or a 13 inch MacBook Pro or an iMac or whatever, wait until it gets Apple Silicon to update because that's really the only way that you're gonna know for sure that you've waited for the major one, the big one. I'll continue to provide coverage and updates of anything that I learn. I'll also be posting more regularly on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, if you are looking for more up-to-date predictions and rumors and whatever coverage of this whole transition you might be looking for. As usual, I hope you guys found this video helpful and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So with that, I will see you all in the next video.